the Salahis were definitely on the list today. The Committee on Homeland Security will come to order. They even had place settings at table number one. But through their lawyer, America's most infamous schmoozers sent their regrets to the House Committee on Homeland Security, so their names will now be on a subpoena. No one from the Secret Service prevented them from entering. White House Social Secretary Desiree Rogers also declined an invitation to explain why she wasn't working the door that night, which left the director of the Secret Service to take the proverbial bullet all by himself. How in the world could this couple get past the Secret Service? Terrorists only need to be successful once. We have to be successful all the time. Their entry into the White House is unacceptable and indefensible. Director Mark Sullivan says three of his agents are now on paid leave as punishment for waving the Salahis through the first checkpoint after seeing their names were not on the list. I'm about to throw the ball, and you're watching Plum TV. As vineyard owners and polo aficionados, the Salahis spent years hobnobbing from Aspen to the Beltway. This is my two minutes of fame. Their wedding featured almost 2,000 guests and a Supreme Court justice. McHale also passed herself off as a former Washington Redskins cheerleader. She wasn't, but for years, team alumni took her at her word. I think that this is somebody who probably needs some help trying to figure out who she is. Sally Quinn has monitored the cream of Washington society for decades and says they are not the state dinner type. I think this desperate need for recognition has taken her way over the top, and her husband as well. So unfounded or not, this same convincing sense of entitlement was apparently the key into the most closely watched house in the world. This couple has pioneered a new way to breach security. Well, let's not give them too much credit. I think that they went in with a bum rush and the celebrity jam. Alex Mamlet, also known as Kid Protocol, is a self-professed former professional party crasher. The old buddy up. The old, yeah, I'm supposed to be here. I just went out for a minute. And he recognizes some basic yet effective techniques in the Salahi's approach. So if you go in fast and hard and have a camera crew with you, you're often not going to get questioned. Yeah. So I think what the Salahi's did is by having an over-exuberant sense of confidence and a camera crew, they sort of dumbfounded the security. As an aspiring filmmaker who could never get into Hollywood's hottest parties, he began making a documentary about crashing them. The more security there is at a party, the easier it is to get in. If there's one person guarding the door, they know they have to check every single person that comes in. If there's two people guarding the door, they often assume that you are checking in with the other one. Over the years, he studied the dark arts of counterfeiting. What I've done here is I've seen that they had these blue wristbands, so I found some blue newspaper and I created a fake wristband. He became a master of disguise. I found that if I dress up as a chef and carry a live lobster, I've never been turned down. And catalog different types of diversions. Skifa crew, working it. Caught you sleeping. There's the bait and switch, run and gun. I'm with the band, hucklebuck, hottie diversion, ticket stub, double asticle, back door, and the chicken monkey. You're gonna see here is a little one that I do often, which is having a half-filled glass in your hand. That way people think you are you're already inside. This is me getting into uh, the VIP tent. At the truck. So, so you pressure. travel with a glass and then... always have a half-filled glass in your hand. <laughs> if you, if that's party crashing 101. He taught himself to read upside down, all the better to spot an unchecked name on the clipboard. And flick. A N T F L I C K. He enjoyed oceans of free sushi and fittingly crashed the premiere of Wedding Crashers. Hey, Lou Epstein, I want you to meet a real mensch, Chuck Schwartz. Sanjay Collins. Chuck Vendelou. Seamus O'Toole. Mommy O'Shea. I'm ready to get drunk. And in his coup de grace for a show on VH1, he evaded an army of French security to stroll the red carpet at Cannes. I had done it. With Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Judge him if you must. But no one ever got subpoenaed by Congress for poaching shrimp and hanging with Bon Jovi. And beyond the sobering security implications of Gate Crasher Gate, Kid Protocol is also offended by their motivation. He says he always did it to break down the VIP caste system and strike a blow for the common man, while the Salahis are out to prove they are anything but common.
Everyone should have a certain level of entitlement. People should feel that they deserve to rub elbows with a certain, other, you know, cast above them. But I think the Salahis have a little bit of a grandiose sense of entitlement. You know, I think that it's one thing to get into a VIP party, it's a, certainly a whole other thing to sneak into the White House. I got a car, please, some guys. Sweet. Kid Protocol hoped to end his documentary by becoming famous and having a fabulous party open to all crashers. It didn't happen. But with a possible reality show deal, the Salahis may still have a tented celebration in their future. Who will come? That's another question. No one will ever take them seriously again. Now, maybe they'll end up being big TV reality show superstars. I don't know. But I think that in trying to get into the world that they clearly wanted to belong to, this is exactly the wrong way to go for them. I'm Bill Weir for Nightline in New York.